Hey folks, Jen or Murgerfin, back again. Sorry, took a little break, had some uh, real life challenges. Um, here today, I've had it for a while, I've been enjoying it for a while, the GG Penelope. Let's take a look at what comes in the box and how you put it together. So let's take a look at the Penelope as it came, assembled in what it came with. It has the nice, uh, very deeply etched logo, which makes it easy to uh, unscrew the tank, actually. Inside the bag, there is some ceramic wick and one coil that is already, if you've seen my OD videos, a combination of non-resistance and resistance wire in the middle. Unscrew the top cap. Has a nice O-ring to keep a uh, watertight seal around the uh, mouthpiece there. And then the tank, which is very easy to grab and uh, release from the bottom because that etching is very deep. And we'll take the tank off. And then we have the mouthpiece, which is also your juice flow control because as you screw it, <laughs> that's what she said, you are allowing more of the wick to show. Completely closed, no juices going into the coil, open, and the most wick is exposed. And we have this little ring, which is the ground. It's going to connect one of the NR sides of the wire to the ground, while the other side connects it to the positive post. So we'll take this one off. And then we can take out the ceramic housing. And that's the positive post sticking up. That's part of this ceramic housing. Now this is a little different than the Odysseus in that the ceramic um, is only on one side. See those two indents where the wire and the wick go down? One of them is metal on this and one of them is ceramic. Um, the metal is the ground side, so we're going to put the wire under the wick here so that it hits the ceramic and doesn't make a connection. Oops. So ceramic wire on the inside around here and then wire on the other side there. And the positive will make a connection between these two little knurled pieces of metal. You wrap the wire around there, that's the positive connection, and then you screw that little nut up so it connects. Um, there's also a little screw indentation in there so you can uh, make that housing tighter on the post if you need to, and I did need to do that as you saw me wiggling it around before. Um, I tightened that up. And there's one little o-ring between that one slit and the bottom. So let's go ahead and get our little wire out. Now, this is really hard to see on this camera, but these I think have been machined. I don't think a person can do that by hand, but if you looked at my OD video, you had to take two pieces of non-resistance wire and connect them with a piece of resistance wire in the middle. On this pre-manufactured wire, it's already been done. I don't know if you can see. I'll try putting it again. It's this white napkin. You can see kind of a little bump and a knot there where the two NR sides have been connected and then that little bit of thinner wire in the middle is the resistance wire itself. So it's kind of already been done for you. I wish they had more of these available for sale because it saves a lot of time. Twisting those two wires together is a pain in the bub kiss, but it works. So we're going to take that little bump where the non-resistance wire starts and get that closest to the wick here. You want to kind of be in the center so that if the wick folded over, you would kind of be, you know, where that loop is. And then you want to wrap, you know, five or four or five coils as close as you can get them without touching. And as you can as tight as you can get them without really totally compressing the wick because you want it to act as a, you know, transport for the juice. So you wrap it around until the, uh, you get to the other end of the non-resistance wire. You kind of bend them around, pinch them between your fingers until both sides are sticking out. Now that part that you're holding between your thumb and forefinger is what's going to go into the ceramic cup. And you want to try to get that coil in the center. There we go. Now we're going to push both ends of wire and wick into the grooves. And then the positive one gets wrapped around that bottom post. 
one rep, two reps, doesn't matter, as long as there's metal contact between those two pieces. And then you should be able to just uh, twist that and it'll snap off, but <coughs> apparently I suck. And oh, by the way, be careful with these little puppies, because they're kind of like the high metal strings on a guitar. And if you poke yourself in the finger with them, you will bleed, <laughs> as you will see in a moment. Okay. And on the other side for the ground, I'm going to push the wick in, pull the wire down, out of the way, so I can get the ring on there eventually. I just want to get the uh, wick in the groove so that I can trim it. Ah, see? Poked myself. Ah. Mean wire. Okay, now I'm going to trim up the excess uh, wick because I don't really want it down around the bottom of where it's going to screw into the base. Ah, I got butt on the wick. I guess I'm going to be vaping my own uh, hazardous material. I'll trim up the other side. So I forget that out of camera view, but I, I think you guys can figure out how to trim. Now, band-aid time. Okay, now we're going to take our coil bit, the ceramic cup assembly, and screw it into the base. Oh, get that wick in there. And just keep screwing it up. Now, I like to get the post to stick out just a millimeter or so farther than the ground contacts around it, just to make sure, you know, some mods are a little funkier. If that post isn't up there real well, it won't uh, activate. Um, and then I'm going to hold that wire down. Now it's important that this ground ring touches that metal wire on the other side, that loose one that's hanging out, because that's what makes the ground or negative connection. You want to put this on after you have the center post where you need it to be, because this is sort of going to lock it down from, from the, the base screwing up any higher or poking the post out any further. Stick it on our probe battery. If she fires, let's see what uh, the resistance check is while I have it on here. And it is a 1.4, 1.5. Perfection. Yay. Now I can trim that extra wire. All right, so let's take the bottom off. Get rid of this excess wire that doesn't work since we know we got it all wrapped up good. And you could just twist it too. In fact, sometimes that works better. I'm just going to wet the coil a little bit. Drip juice. There we go. Just a little bit. You could also put it down the mouthpiece after you fill it, but. Alright, now let's get the. Uh mouthpiece on. Now again, this is your juice control. And if it's all the way down and tight, which it should be for filling, because otherwise you might get a leak. So you want that tight closed. But as you open it, once you're using it, you're exposing that wicked then to the liquid and it will bring it up to the coil. As you release it more. But we're going to close it up because we're going to fill it. Then we're going to put on the tank. Now you want the tank to make a nice seal with that O-ring, that black O-ring on the bottom there. You sort of almost want that O-ring to disappear. There we go. A nice tight seal. Now, the worst part of the Penelope is the only way to fill it is in between those little metal bits at the top of the mouthpiece, which requires a syringe. <sighs> it's so much easier when you can fill tanks without needing syringes, really. And it's very, very hard to see when you have it full. I mean, you get like, if you're just pushing on that thing, you get like, you know, a millisecond of warning before the juice is overflowed. And you kind of got to get the light to hit it just right 
so that you can see up there we go see juice all the way to the top but it's really hard to see it there that's kind of one thing I wish was different and then you put the nice top on and you have a sealed Penelope so that was a close-up look at the Penelope and how to put one together. Um, I've really been enjoying it. I mean, I have several of the first version Odysseuses, and the only real quantitative difference is, is the mouthpiece has a little difference on the top, um, and the ceramic cup is different. And I believe Imeo is shipping different wick with it. Um, but even with those slight differences, um, for me the change is kind of drastic. Um, I kind of didn't like these quite as much as I like the iAddy because I couldn't get the juice control perfect. Um, I mean, the advantage to these is you could put them in extended mode and have Enormo tank. But I could never get quite to the point where I could get it from being flooded or dry. That, like, the area where there was a difference in there was very slight. But still, it tasted pretty good, performed pretty well. This performs amazing and tastes amazing. The cup is improved. I mean, the only drawback is I can't see how much juice I have. It's a little harder to fill because you have to use the syringe. Um, but the taste is better. And the vapor production is better. It, don't ask me how. And that's with an inhale for you people who like to get me for that. Um, but I mean, let's face it, this is sort of enormous. This is kind of sleek. I mean, it's really not much thicker than an OD in dripping mode. Longer, but not thicker, really. Um, which is nice. Uh, it, it's pretty much, you know, three or four mil. Uh, it's enough to bring some juice along. and. You know, I usually bring a little plastic baggie with some bottles so I can refill my other tanks, so I've just been bringing, you know, a syringe with a cap on it so I can fill it out the office if I have to. Uh, you really must, must close the airpiece all the way before you fill it or it will um, get extra liquid in the cup and then that will come out in the positive post. But as long as you have that closed, it is pretty much... Um, completely sealed, you know, Emeo and his O-rings. But they do work. You have to give them that. Um, and this one, I haven't had that problem with getting a dry hit. Um, I've sometimes filled it poorly and forgotten to close the ring and gotten a little gurgle, but uh, usually not. Um, and it doesn't have a problem wicking at all. And I can find, it's very easy to find the sweet spot where it uh, pulls just enough juice in to run perfectly. Now this is not the original coil that I did in the video. I broke that one actually, um, and I had to do it the old OD way with you know twisting the NR wires together, and I didn't really get a very good coil. I can't remember what it uh, tested out as. 2.2 ohms, 2.3, somewhere in there, and I have the Provary set at 4.3 volts, so just a touch more than a fresh battery on a 2.2 ohm, so standard resistance coil, pretty much. Fifty-fifty PGVG raw juice. It's great. I'd like to trade my ODs in for more of these. I just wish they held more juice. But, I mean, on the other hand, I think he made them smaller for a reason. And that's because, you know, UFSs and uh, the original OD are all, and the original IADI are all pretty large. And we're starting to get into the range of using much smaller devices. So. 
OD on an Ego Twist. While it is a little top heavy, because that's some pretty solid stainless steel up there, um, it doesn't look too incredibly out of place. And performs just as well. Um, and you know, a, a lot of people are touting the Phoenix, and, and I have to finish my review with the Phoenix. Um, it's fine. It works for the money. They're, I mean, I paid forty dollars for mine, but they're charging like what fifteen to twenty for them now. I mean, for the money, it works. But you know, you have to keep it vertical, or the juice comes out the pee hole. It's not a tank. It's designed for dripping. Granted, you can drip a lot of drops in there, but this doesn't leak. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't leak. Well, unless you overfill it or fill it wrong like I do. So, I mean, he's kind of made it uh, sleeker, so it works on a bunch of different devices without looking too incredibly out of place as a, as a full-size Odysseus would. Um, I mean, here it is on a SBR. That's at the low setting, the green setting. Let's take it up to yellow. I mean, it works great. So, um, and, and I think, I mean, I, I now have a couple of mesh coils um, in the Zenises that I've gotten working fairly well for me but they are a lot finickier. Um, the silica wick and the wire is much easier to wrap. It's much easier to get working. You don't have to worry about seasoning the stainless steel wick. You don't have to worry about it, the coil shorting to the wick, the metal wick that it's wrapped around. Um, and the flavor is pretty darn good in these too. Um, I, I'd put them almost uh, equivalent with a, a stainless steel mesh. In fact, I sometimes taste the metal, I think, a little bit. So for me, these are just a lot easier to put together. They work, they're functional, and the performance on this is amazing. So that's my take on the GG Penelope. It is by far my favorite rebuildable of all of the ones I've put together and tried. Um, so that's my Merc Two Cents. See you next time. Thanks for watching.